Hi, I'm Rick Engelking, and I'm one of the sales reps for Zebra Instrument. I'd like to thank you for purchasing one of our adapter sets. This one's for the new multi-speed variable torque condenser fan ECM motors that are starting to be used in a number of major equipment manufacturers condensing units. I'll spend a few minutes introducing you to them and then I'll show you how to use them. But first, you need to know two important things. One, in order to use these adapters, you must have a variable speed Zebra diagnostic tool, model VZ7. Secondly, the tool must have a serial number greater than 30,000, 30000, in order to process the signal characteristics that these motors use. If your serial number is less than 30,000, call us at 512-869-7000 and ask for tech support to arrange for your unit's software to be upgraded. There's no charge for the upgrade, but you must pay the shipping charges. Okay, let's look at the adapters themselves. There are three different pieces to the adapter set. The first piece is the blue-green adapter. It has an inline fuse holder on its red wire. This fuse is a one amp standard fast blow fuse. To protect your VZ7 and any motor or circuit that it's connected to from accidental damage, never replace this fuse with anything greater than one amp. Also, never connect the clip at the end of this wire to or allow it to accidentally touch anything besides 24 volts AC. The circuit board on your VZ7 will be instantly damaged if connected to a higher voltage. Your warranty will not cover damage of this type. The blue-green adapter has three other sections. The blue connector, which mates with the gold connector on your VZ7. The green connector, which can mate with the incoming signal harness at the motor's electronics module. And the three female quick connect terminals, which can plug onto the circuit board or an equipment harness near it. The second adapter is called the red-yellow adapter. It has a red connector, which can plug into the electronics module on the condenser fan motor or you could use the three mil quick disconnects to interface with the harness going to the motor in the circuit board area. The yellow connector is made to plug into the blue connector of your VZ7. The third adapter in your kit is just called the power adapter. Testing a motor that has been removed from a condensing unit would require the power adapter to be used to supply the 240 volts to the motor's power connections. Let's talk about diagnosing problems with condensing units that use these types of motors. First, these motors are multi-speed. They typically operate in units with multi-speed not reported back to the VZ7 like most ECM motors do. So you will not be able to measure their speed this way. They will change their torque, however, to suit different load conditions in order to run efficiently. The motors themselves have two sections, just like most other ECM motors, the winding section and the electronics module. To disassemble this type of motor, first remove all of the power to the motor and wait five minutes for the internal capacitors to bleed their charge down to a safe level. You can receive a nasty shock from metal components inside the motor if you don't heed this advice. The motor has four screws or bolts on the end opposite the shaft that should be removed in order to separate the two sections of the motor. Once separated, there's a three-wire connector that must be unlatched and disconnected. Don't pull on the wires to separate the connector. Press the latch and pull the connectors apart. Most of these motors can be replaced by either purchasing the whole motor $300 typically, or just the electronics module, sometimes less than $100. The winding section cannot be purchased separately because if a winding section becomes electronically damaged, the module will be damaged as a result. If you find you need to replace one of these motors or its components, you must get the matched module or motor that was designed for this particular equipment. There is no generic one motor fits all. You may have to order a motor and wait a few days. This won't make your customer happy, but be careful with any shortcuts. Several states have enacted legislation making it illegal to replace any, any energy saving motor with a PSC or non-energy saving motor. Check with your state's rules before replacing one of these with anything else but a recommended replacement device. Okay, let's look at the two motor sections. 
The three pin connector on the wires coming out of the winding section probably looks familiar. It's the same type of connector found in many other GE by Regal Beloit ECM motors of this general size. If you need to do a winding section test with your VZ7 diagnostic tool, you will plug the VZ7 small harness into this connector. The electronics module, however, has connectors that are quite different than any other ECM motor. The unit is more waterproof than inside units and probably has a conduit and plastic conduit connector going into the side of the motor. The lower voltage signal lines are connected through a polarized four pin connector in the electronics section. The power connections, 240 volts, are provided by three male quarter inch quick disconnect tabs built into the upper circuit board in the module. The lower circuit board is embedded in an epoxy to protect it from moisture. The power connections are labeled BLK, GRN, and BRN. Line power is introduced to the BLK and BRN terminals, while the GRN terminal provides a safety ground point and zero voltage reference point. Never power up one of these motors without, safe, without connecting this terminal to a safe ground point. Okay, now that we've described the motors, let's talk about how to diagnose problems in their systems. Unlike PSC motors, which can easily be tested with a separate power source, ECM motor problems are more easily detected when observing their operation as part of the whole system. Your VZ7 is placed in between the system's controlled circuit board and the motor. The VZ7 is now in a place where it can monitor and report which signals are coming down the lines from the circuit board to the motor. This is called the observe mode. You also have the choice to interrupt those signals and generate your own commands to operate the motor. This is called the control mode. There are two different methods to use these adapters to hook up your VZ7 between the system board and the motor. You will use either one or the other, not both methods at the same time. The method you choose will probably be chosen by how difficult it is to connect to this particular piece of equipment or because the motor has already been removed from the system. Here's method one. The signal connections are usually made with three wires, often colored blue, white, and yellow. If the signal wires are connected to the system circuit board or nearby with standard quarter inch quick disconnect terminals male terminals on the circuit board, female terminals on the wires coming from the motor, and the circuit board is easily accessible, it's probably best to use the adapter's quick disconnect terminals and not the red and green connectors on the adapters. Before you unplug any connection, make a note of it so that you can reconnect the leads properly when you're finished. Note, if the blue, white, yellow color scheme is used, the blue wire is typically tied to the common side of 24 volt incoming power. After disconnecting all power, 240 volt and 24 volts, into the system, disconnect the signal wires one at a time from the circuit board and plug them into the appropriate quick disconnect mail terminals on the red-yellow adapter set. You will have to tempor temporarily remove the safety cap terminals covering the mail tabs. Keep them handy and reinstall them when finished. Make certain any unused terminal is completely covered to prevent accidental shorts. The matching female quick disconnect terminals on the blue-green harness should now be connected to the male tabs on the circuit board. Now gently connect the blue connector of the blue-green adapter to the yellow connector on your VZ7. Be very careful when plugging in these 16-pin connectors. The pins inside are fragile and can be easily damaged if forced. Wiggle them back and forth to seat them rather than pushing with any force. Replacement harnesses are available for the VZ7 if you don't heed this advice. Zebra Instruments didn't choose this type of connector. We have to use it in order to mate with the standard input-output connections on furnace and air handler ECM motors. Now, the yellow connector on the red-yellow adapter should be carefully plugged into the blue connector of your VZ7. Finally, the alligator clip on the red wire should be securely connected to the 24-volt hot low-voltage wire. Be extremely careful not to allow this clip to touch any voltage source that is higher than 24 volts. Your VZ7 will be instantly damaged. Now return 24 volt and 240 volt power to the system. The VZ7's mode light should be alternately blinking red and green. This tells you that it has the proper incoming power. 
Press and hold the downside of the setting steps, step switch and keep holding it for about 8 seconds until the digital display shows 13. If it does not show a 13, verify that your serial number is 30,000 or higher and try again. The VZ7 is now ready to interpret and generate signals for this type of motor. You'll notice some similarities and some differences in this mode versus standard ECM mode. The voltage switch will display 24 voltage while pressed. The winding test switch operates exactly the same also. The observe and control modes work the same way, but the option, option step switch has no effect with these motors. The CFM and RPM are not reported by this type of motor, so they won't display. Only the heat one and heat two lines are used with this motor type, so selecting any other output line in control mode will have no effect. The actual numbers shown in the display when you are in control mode and advancing the setting steps, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, but only 1 and 2 have any effect, and they correspond to heat 1 and heat 2 LEDs respectively. There are no taps used on this type of motor, so no tap LED will light. Occasionally, there's a soft glow from one of the right-hand Heat 1 or Heat 2 LEDs. This is a slight feedback from the motor and should be ignored. Look for bright LEDs when ex examining signals in the observe mode. You now use your VZ7 just like usual to determine exactly what is happening in your system. Is the condenser circuit board providing at least 24 volt to run the signal functions? Do a voltage test. Are there proper signals coming down the heat 1 and heat 2 lines when the system is operating and the fan should be on? Use observe mode. Can I start and run the motor in both of its speeds? Use the control mode. If the motor does not operate in any mode and I am certain that 240 volt AC power is being received at the motor's power terminals, which section of the motor is at fault? The electronics module or the, wind or the winding section? Do a winding test. Method 2 of connecting the VZ7 to these motors is used when the circuit board area is not easily accessible or the connectors there will not mate properly with your adapters. For instance, some rude ream units use a 6-pin connector on the circuit board with one of those pins feeding back into the board. To use this alternate motor connection method, disconnect all power, 24 volt and 240, to the system and wait five minutes for the capacitors in the motor to bleed off their charge. Separate the two motor halves as described earlier, but do not disconnect the three pin connector. We have disconnected it here for demonstration purposes only, so that it's easier to see the demonstration. Gently slide out the conduit adapter that's resting in the curved metal behind the electronic module. Gently extend the wires out from the conduit a bit. Squeeze the tabs on the sides of the four position connector and separate the connector from its mate on the circuit board. Plug that connector into the green connector on the blue-green adapter. These connectors are keyed and will only fit one way. When using method 2, we never use the quick connects. Plug the red connector on the red-yellow adapter into the mating socket on the circuit board of the electronics module. The safety terminals for the quick disconnect terminals of the adapter must be covering all of the tabs, preventing any accidental shorts. Reassemble the motor, knowing that the slots built into the curved metal shell of the module, they must align with the tabs on the metal of the winding section. Tighten and screw the bolts in. Clip the alligator clip on the red wire to a 24 volt low voltage hot terminal. Do not allow the clip to ever touch any voltage higher than 24 volt. It will instantly damage your VZ7 and possibly any motor or circuits that it is connected to. Reapply power and test the system and the motor as described previously. An option to method 2 is used when the motor has been completely removed from the system. You should completely remove the conduit connector, conduit, and any wires coming into the motor, noting their connections for reassembly. 
The three wire power harness is used to provide 240 volt power and safely ground to the motor's power tabs. In this case, you would disconnect the terminals previously found there. Of course, you must wait the five minutes previously mentioned if the motor has been energized. You will have to provide a safe method of connecting 240 volt power to the three wire harness. It should be fused on both power legs and safely grounded. These motors rarely draw more than a few amps, except when first plugged into power and charging their capacitors. The other connections are done the same way as method two, with this exception. A 24 volt, low voltage, common input must be provided on the male quick connect terminal on the blue wire of the red yellow adapter, so that the V7 can receive power to operate. When testing a motor that has been removed, you cannot use the observe mode. Use the control mode instead. Thanks for watching our presentation. The instructions found here are not intended to show you how to use the VZ7 in general. Refer to its instructional DVDs for that information. Our website is www.zebrainstruments.com. Thanks. Bye.